Hey, welcome to our video on factoring by grouping. Now this, uh, factoring by grouping is just one of many strategies we can use to factor out a quadratic. The basic idea, um, if you look at something simple like 5 times 23, well one way to do 5 times 23, which of course is, is, a, is 115, one way to think about it though is to say, okay, well what's 5 times 20 plus 5 times 3. So you could basically take the 23 and split it up into 20 and 3, and then multiply 5 by each part. This is the basic idea behind the distributive property. So 5 times 20 would come first, maybe, and then 5 times 3. This will give you the same result, right? Because 5 times 20 is 100, and 5 times 3 is 15. So if we add these up, we still get 115 which was our original answer. But factoring by grouping, what I'm saying is it builds off this principle. It says, okay, what you want to do is split things up into two groups, or more, depending, and then rewrite it so it factors out in something like this. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to look for a common link between your two or more terms. In this case, these are our one, two terms and each of them has something in common. They're both being multiplied by 5, right? And then what you do to rewrite it in this form up here is you pull the 5 out and refactor it. Typically what you might write is 5 times 20 plus 3. So in this way we've regrouped. We've started off with 5 times 20, added 5 times 3, and rewrote it to 5 times 20 plus 3. You pulled out the common factor in both groups. That's the same thing that we're about to look at. It just looks a little bit more obscure. So for example, if I give you x squared plus 5x, right, plus 6, how would you go about doing this? Well, a basic strategy in this situation is to split up the 5x into something friendly, like try 2x and 3x. You could try 4 and 1, but I think this will give us a better result. So x squared plus this, 2x plus 3x plus 6. And now you can make two friendly groups. You can think of <clears throat> your first group right here and the other one right there. And although it might not be obvious as to why I'm choosing this, uh, when you're working this out, you can choose different combinations to see what works. This will work nicely. In the first pair, x is our common factor, right? x squared is just x times x, and 2x is 2 times x, just like over here our common factor was 5. So what we do is we pull out the x. So x times x plus 2. Look how similar it looks to this right here. It's 5 times 20 plus 3. Here it's x times x plus 2. Same principle. In the second part, what's our common factor? Well, both terms don't have x. They both have 3, a factor of 3. So right, 3 times x, that's 3x, and 3 times 2 is 6. So we split apart the 6 into 3 and 2 and the 3x into 3 and x and rewrote it like this. Again, just like we did down here. Now the tough part is seeing how this can go any further. But again, it just builds off of this principle right here. This time the common term is not 5 or a simple number, but this whole thing right here. It's x plus 2. So first we multiply x by x plus 2, and then we multiply 3 by x by plus 2. So essentially, we took x plus 2 and multiplied it by both x and then 3. So you can think of this as x plus 2. We pull that whole thing out, just like we pull the 5 out here, and multiply that by x plus 3. And we factored by, by groups. Because if we redistributed this, you can see it maybe better then, x plus 2 times x will give us this term right here, and x plus 2 times 3 will give us this term right here. That's the basic idea behind factoring by grouping. You factor it out. Now let's look at some tougher examples. Okay, so in a tougher example, uh, you might get, we can get all sorts of things, right? But maybe, let's say you got 8x cubed plus x plus 64x, oops, 64x squared, right, 
minus 8. What do you do? Well, to, I mean, one thing, and I'll, I'll say this works a lot, is to group the highest termed parts together. So x to the third, x to the second. Uh, move these together. Rearrange them. We're adding, so it's not going to alter anything. Uh, but I guess one thing I'll adjust, of course, um, I made a little mistake here, sorry. This should say not plus 64x, but, but minus 64x squared. So that being said, we're going to move these two together to get 8x cubed minus 64x squared plus x and minus 8. And you'll see why this is helpful. And, and, and generally, that is the case. That, that moving these together will help. So what do we do? Well, again, our goal is to find uh, something common in these groups. I'm going to group it this way right here, using the associative property, basically regrouping. And here, what's the common factor? Well, let's break this down a little bit. 8x cubed, we can think of that as 8x squared times x. That would give us 8x cubed. Minus 64x squared, we can think of that as 8 times 8 times x times x. So let's rewrite this. Okay. What's the common factor? Well, I see an 8x squared here, and I see an 8x squared there. That's a common factor. Pull it out. 8x squared times x minus 8. And here we have another x minus 8. What do we do? Well, we've got the answer right in front of us. It's just a matter of becoming good at seeing this. The first thing we want to see is that, that you can envision, envision a 1 here, because 1 times anything won't change the result. So we have 1 multiplied by x minus 8, right? And then we have 8x squared minus 8x minus 8. So we have two numbers, 8x squared and 1, both multiplied by the same term. So it's the common term. We're going to pull that out. So let's pull the x minus 8 out. When we do that, what's left? Well, now in the first term, we only have 8x squared. And the second term, we only have a 1. So we've done it. We've factored this out. Um, and we can't go any further, right? We'll just leave it at that. We factored this out, and we did it with grouping. <coughs> and this was a little bit tougher to see because, um, well, we had to put the 1 in there and also... Uh, there's higher powers that we're dealing with throughout, but we can still do it. Okay, so when you're writing this out, um, be careful. x minus 8 times 8x squared plus 1. What's really important is that you include these parentheses in here. I often forget to, so don't make that mistake. Include those parentheses because you want to multiply everything in here by these parts over here. Okay, in this last example, we're mixing things up. We've got x's and y's next to each other, and it looks really unfriendly. To group this one, um, you, you want to shuffle things around. And, and what I'm going to say is, and a, and a big hint for myself when I was working on this, I noticed that this 25y term, right, I want to pair it with something else. I want to pair it with another term that has a y in it. And the only other one that does is right here, and that's going to be helpful to me. I want to leave these two together because they both have x's, right? But the y only has another y over here, and that's going to help. So let's rearrange, and I think you'll see how it helps. So 30xy plus 25y, go to associate or group those two together, plus 30x plus 36x squared. Okay, let's pull some common factors. What's a common factor in both of these? Well, in the first one, notice you both have y's, and 25 and 30 both have a common factor. Right? The common factor for both of them is the number 5. So I pull out a 5 and a y. 5y times what would give me 30xy? Well, 6x. And then 5y times what gives me 25y? Well, times 5. I'm going to add this over here. What's the common factor now? Well, in both cases we have at least 1x, and in both of them we have a multiple of 6. So I'm going to pull out the number 6 and x, and I'm going to multiply that back in by 5, right, because 30, uh, 6x times 5 is 30x, plus 6x. 
And now I've got what I need. Except, well, the order of 5 and 6x is the opposite of the order of 6x and 5, but you might remember the commutative property. I can switch the order and it won't change a thing. So we switch the order. 6x plus 5, right? It's the same thing as 5 plus 6x. We write the rest, and now we can see that we have a common term, right? So now what's the common term? Well, both times we have a 6x plus 5. Let's multiply by 6x and then by 5y. So the common term that we pull out is 6x plus 5. So pull it out. 6x plus 5. And we multiply that by what? Well, by the remaining pieces. 5y and 6x. And then we're done. We've got it. All right. So I hope this helped. But the last thing we want to do, the last thing we want to add in, are the parentheses right here. Because if I didn't, it would mean 5 times all of this and then plus 6x. But really, we're factoring this out so we have these two pairs multiplied. So make sure you have those parentheses in, just like this. All right, thanks.